Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about how to outrank your competition on Amazon. We're gonna check out any new trends that we can see on Amazon, and is there anything happening, any advice that we can give you? Well, our guest today is going to share his advice on Black Friday and what's coming up in the new year. And we're also talking about what do brands miss when it comes to ranking. All right. I'm saying all right a lot today. I guess it's going to be an all right day. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. I was just telling our uh, guest and Kelsey that I walked into this ice cold, frigid room today. So anyways, if you see me shivering or warming up my arms, it's because I don't know what's happened, but this room is not getting any heat. But who cares about that? Let's just talk about how to outrank your competition on Amazon. Okay, for the past seven years, our guest has studied the Amazon algorithm to understand how it works and how he can work with ranking. He's traveled the world to speak and shares his techniques with some of the largest Amazon sellers. His personal background is marketing and branding and having his own brand along with a, a, a bunch of Amazon sellers well into the nine figures. He's combined this into what he calls the house of AMZ. First time guest, I'm going to welcome Mark Casey. And just coincidentally enough, I met him uh, recently at uh, an event I was at on the weekend. So this is just perfect timing. Anyways, let's have a word from our sponsor and then we'll get into it. I want to thank Jeff Schick Legal for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? How does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J-E-F-F-S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. You know, well, let's bring up Kelsey first. Where All right. Where's the there I am. Here I you am. Know, hey, I, how's it going? <laughs> I'm freezing here. I'm free. I'm freezing. Call mom. Tell her to crank up the heat. I don't know why this is so cold. Anyways, you know that commercial uh, that we just ran from Jeff Schick. I, yeah. I was just talking, well, especially this time of year. So I was talking with Chris McCabe, who specializes in suspensions or getting rid of suspensions, helping Amazon sellers. Well, Jeff, I, I can't believe like when we were in Mexico and we were talking to him for the first time that for 89 bucks per month, he takes care of, uh, you know, going up to bat for Amazon sellers as well. So anyways, uh, if you haven't checked it out, and this isn't a sales pitch, but check him out. Uh, he's been on the podcast before and he's blown us away. So anyways, we're happy that he's a new sponsor as well as um, just his service for 89 bucks. I don't know if you can retain a lawyer for 89 bucks uh, per month. That's pretty good for me. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So obviously he's a sponsor for a reason. Like we, we uh, definitely trust him and uh, his service is incredible. As I know, a lot of people are pretty tight for cash and, you know, spending it on an expensive lawyer isn't always ideal for the small Amazon seller. So this is something you get the best of both worlds. So if you are interested, uh, links are in the description. If you mention Lunch with Norm, you do get, um, I think it's 50% off the first two months. So not a bad deal. And uh, it looks like we got a bunch of welcome back norms. 
uh, from Tony, uh, Rad, good to see you. Uh, we got a whole gang joining us today. Uh, thank you. Nice mustache. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also from Chuck, too. Um, great to see everyone. Cool Hand 99, Powered. Great to see you as well, Christine and Marina and Claudia. Wow, we got a whole gang here. It's great to see everyone. Um, so you guys know what to do. Smash those like buttons. Give us a thumbs up. And um, we'll get started just shortly. But before you do, make sure you join the Lunch with Norm Facebook group. That's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. That's where all the fun happens. Uh, go over there. We got discounts, giveaways. Uh, you can ask your questions about Amazon and uh, e-commerce. And um, yeah, we also have a webinar. It's not even <laughs> officially released yet, but we're doing a webinar um, happening uh in december <laughs> with seller candy and norm <laughs> i think i see the comment that you're laughing at <laughs> it's uh yeah thank you andrew <laughs> yeah and uh, <laughs> from Rad, i may use him right away yeah just make sure you mention lunch with norm and you'll get that discount um and uh yeah we can get started oh i do want to mention one last thing before um we are making a shift on youtube we're going to only be streaming on the Lunch with Norm Facebook page. Um, we're gonna start this on Wednesday. We had to pick a date and just do it. So going forward for an uncertain amount of time, we're gonna be try trying to just stream only from the Facebook page. Um, so you'll see Wednesday's episode, we're gonna change it up. Um, it's gonna direct back over to the Facebook page. Um, we are still uploading the full episodes to YouTube, um, but it will be just like a day afterwards um, after editing, but anyways, um yeah no youtube we're just testing it out we might change it back but it's just something that we're we want to play with and see um how it goes um so yeah oh, it looks like you had dinner with home builders hardware last thursday too i had dinner with a bunch of people last thursday it was great all right awesome so everyone missed you it was it's good to have you back and uh, i think we can get started Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for taking over uh, last uh, Wednesday and Friday. Thank you so much. Hey, no um, hope you liked it. And uh, anyways, uh, we've got a great guest today. So I met him at uh, Pow Wow just recently, which is really kind of cool. Um, uh, and that was uh, Pow Wow in Mawa. What a great event. Um, so Trellis had their event on Thursday, and then I flew down to New York and New Jersey, New Jersey and had that event. It was awesome. So I uh, can't wait to get Mark on in two seconds. But anyways, if you do have questions or comments, um, throw them over into the comments section and sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the podcast. Welcome, Mark. Hello. Good morning or good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, good afternoon. <laughs> it's great seeing you again. Yeah, likewise. It was, it was so funny because whenever I show you, I'm like, hey, I, I think we have something planned for the next week. So it, it worked out to be uh, good timing. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't believe when you said it. I didn't know that you were on this Monday. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it was great. Perfect timing. And exactly. uh, your presentation, when uh, I sat in and I uh, listened to it, it was great. So hopefully that. we Thank can you. tap into some knowledge and uh, give some nuggets today. Sure thing. Yeah, we'll try our best. Okay. All right. So why don't we just start off right off the bat? Uh, do you see any new trends that are coming in on Amazon? Hmm, new trends. I mean, with Amazon, things are always changing. I'm trying yeah. to think what has been recently. I mean, well, maybe not like within the past week, but more recently within the past couple of months, Amazon has been shifting their focus um, to kind of focus on what kind of ranks your kind of um, what ranks your 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 listing for different keywords, et cetera. What, before everyone used to kind of jump on doing giveaways and stuff like that, but kind of Amazon's shifting their focus to doing outside traffic. So I've seen that become really big because a lot of people just do even a couple bucks in ads and that really transforms their listing with the ranking and whatnot. That's something I've seen, but something small, I can't think on top of my mind, but I know Amazon has a lot of different changes coming. Right, yeah, and I, I had a uh, staff meeting today, and one of the people I was talking to just said, did you hear the comment that uh, Jeff Bezos made about cutting back, and it'll probably be better to cut back on larger ticket items? She goes, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, one of the things that came to my mind is I like 
I like working with people that have premium quality products. And what's really interesting is the people that sell premium quality products don't really see a dip, like especially one of the products that we're working with right now, they've actually doubled their sales. And you know, feels like a recession. Uh, lots of other clients that I've, I'm working with, their sales dip. They've dipped as far as 15% so far. And they're you know fighting to get those 15 points back. Um, external traffic's one of them. But this other uh, brand, high, high-end uh, products for pets, and they're just killing it right now, like during this you know recession, the mm -hmm. R word. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, and it's so funny because this I see it being a trend because every time, like let's say on the media or something that people talk about the recession or anything about the economy, I see that actually my clients also see that it takes a dip into sales, that when people talk about it, the sales kind of drop. And then whenever it's not the main focus anymore, the sales go back up, which is very interesting to see. Yeah. Now, what about you? Like um, for, for people that have not heard about you, you're one of the main guys out there. Uh, you have one of the biggest agencies out there for Amazon. You're on the, in the uh, front lines of, uh, you know, the, the good old Amazon agencies. So yeah. what do you think about people spending more money or looking for other product opportunities in the premium side rather than going into the day-to-day -day, uh, grocery or baby or, you know, all these other niches? That are just average. So, exactly. So it's like the quality versus quantity kind of, you know, game. It's because if you're doing something that's day to day, you kind of have the backing of like, you know, people need it. So they're always going to be buying it as opposed to something more premium, but maybe you're going to have less quantity, but the quality, meaning the profits are going to be much more of something that's a premium product. So if I had to pick between the two, it's hard to say because the one that's like the day to day, you know, you're going to get kind of guaranteed sales. You know, people are replenishing and kind of need that for their, day-to-day -day lives as opposed to something that people have to splurge on that's going to be more of a premium product, you know? Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. And now we are coming into Black Friday, uh, Cyber Monday, and even further into the future, the new year. What are you looking out at? What are you doing? What are you not doing? For sure. So you want to kind of, um, I mean, now it's a little bit closer, but you want all the holiday keywords, you want to kind of jump on them and in start inputting them into your your listing, the title, bullet points, description, to at least get ranked for them and index for them. So you start showing up because many people aren't going to be focusing on the specific product keywords rather than the holiday keywords, you know, best gift for, you know, father, best gift for, you know, your friend. Uh, you want to go after those. So I, I saw kind of um, like a tip or trick that someone has, um, has kind of went after is best gifts for, and then there's a whole list of people, right? So you want to target that list of people that um that kind of get gifts the best uh, gift for a grandmother father sister brother, um and then go after those keywords whether it's through PPC or driving different traffic or just pushing those keywords and then you could start to be ranked for them and even if it's relevant or not you're still going to get positioning for those keywords. So are you just putting them all in a row? Best for mother I wouldn't father. I to put in a row but yeah kind of because I, I think there's a list online that's what I, that's what I've seen that that shows this list because that's what people are going to be searching for and you want to go after what people are going to be searching for in regards to like in a specific type of gift so if if you haven't ranked for them already um like I know one of uh Stephen Pope's uh products that he shows He's ranking like crazy all over the map for gifts for X, Y, Z. But if you haven't done it and you're, you're let, let's say it's, it's, you've had a product out there for a year or two and you haven't ranked for it, what are your chances of ranking without like the, the way that I would look at it is you're going to spend a heck of a lot of money to rank for a very broad term like that, aren't you? You, you definitely will. So my suggestion for something like that is, then don't focus on that specifically, but just focus on changing your listing. What I mean by that is fix up your graphics a bit, make them more holiday themed. So at least you can convert all the people who are going on your listing, all the traffic that's already going on your listing, convert them into a holiday idea or holiday sale. You could still put on one of the infographics, use code XYZ for 20% off. So that way, yeah, it's really hard to you know go rank for the new keywords, but what you can do is you could capitalize off your current traffic that you're getting 
and upsell them into something else or just show your graphics as a holiday theme so they feel like they're still getting a deal. I think that's the best idea. Right. And that's a really good point. Uh, like for I sell soap. So just to change out a graphic and put it in a stocking or to, you know, have it with a bow on it or something like that. It, it just gives people, without even saying anything, the idea that you're selling or it's a giftable idea. Um, and I, I know there's two sides of the fence when you're talking about this, but I always make sure people know that this is packaged to be a gift. It's giftable. You know, people want this. It's an alternative to flowers and chocolates. You know, uh, so I, I want to bring that to the forefront. Now, I might put something, a phrase in my title, like you just said, or I might put it in the bullets, but I also might be trying to index on my A plus pages. You know, so um, people are saying, I'm, I mean, I don't know what you think about this, but um, A plus is indexing right now. I agree with that. It's true. Yeah. And are you using any of the metadata in the back end to? Uh, That's target? a little kind of, uh, um, well, it depends. Some people are more open to it. Some people don't care about it. But what I always suggest is using every space you possibly could, even going to the nitty gritty and naming the images, so name get EBC1, mm -hmm. EBC2, naming it after the keywords, because Google picks that up and all these things and will pick it up from the algorithm of Amazon. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, the other thing that uh, I like doing is, here's a, just another way, just get somebody to ask a bloody question. And will this make a perfect gift for men? I mentioned yes. that in my speech. Yeah, oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But this <laughs> is something that we've been telling people to do is they pick up on your Q&As. 100%. 100%. I always tell people when they're first launching your product, and even a lot of people who have like prohibited or who are in the prohibited categories, a lot of things you know you can't advertise on, I tell them just pound those question and answers. It's the easiest and fastest way you can index because you can't put in your title bullet points description and you can't put them into PPC. The only other way for it to be on your listing and for it to be indexed is through those question and answers. Yeah. And a lot of people don't do that. And, and a lot of people, well, I can't get people to answer. Get your mother, get your hamster. Anybody can, you know, ask those questions. And like, well, I, I was talking about it a little while ago. They're similar to a press release. You can spin it any way you want it. So you get the question, and the seller gets to answer it very exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we we created a whole network of people who are willing to do that, and it's literally like five bucks. And that I think that's underrated. After our listing optimization, that's such a big service that people use because it's so powerful. And the people who understand it, those are the ones who use that service, is because you can. Just, put so many keywords into there. And when you're answering, you can even add more keywords into there as well. Yeah, and what I, I just saw Tony uh, Tony Sagar. Uh, I know your listing, Tony, and I've seen it. I've been to your listing and you do use the video. And from what I've seen, you also do the written. So it's the best of both worlds. So I, I agree 100% video is gold, um, but just answering the question uh, as well, just in writing uh, is also something you can do. But I, I, uh, I love that. One other tip to, this is just for quick optimizing or just to, to fill up a little bit more. I don't know if you do this, but I always, I sell soap. I have different scents of soap. So I'll get people to buy multiple types of soap just to get my frequently asked together. So yeah. just going down the list and making sure that every box is ticked going into this uh, holiday that's one thing that if you if you have it with your product, all of your product rather than your competitors, um, you know that's another bonus. What do you think? Hundred percent. I mean, I think that's the best way to kind of also drive traffic to other people to to your other listings, um, and take the real estate that you you know you own. Why would you want to show someone else's listing or uh, products on your page? And that also brings me into that idea. So I'm not sure if you remember, but I spoke about the newer model available kind of feature, that that widget um, that's very underrated. So people think like, oh, only Amazon could do that or you could do it through a black hat way, but that's false. And this is one of the biggest things I think like we, we touched upon and a couple of years ago, maybe four years ago, and it's still working beautiful now um, because many people haven't used it. And what that is is that, so there's a newer model available widget. Um, 
which is you could put under your listing. So let's say you have a current listing that you're getting a bunch of traffic and sales on, and you have a product, obviously your brand product, that's similar or a little bit different, and you want to kind of launch it. So what you do is you, and Amazon, if you ask them, and you know if you get connected to the right person, they'll do it for you. You'll get the newer model available um, widget to your new listing, and literally even just a couple clicks will start ranking the other listing. And what I mentioned was we did as a test. We got a brand new listing that wasn't ranked or indexed for any keywords. We added as a newer model available to the, the main you know, hero listing. Within a day or so, we already saw that they were ranking on a whole bunch of keywords that the main listing was ranked on um, and started getting into the first page and started getting indexed for a whole bunch of keywords because Amazon puts the two together. If they come from a click from the hero and to the newer model available, they're going to give you a whole bunch of indexing and ranking just like that. And it was... I think still till today, the, the, one of the most underrated features that Amazon has. That, um, I, I have to say, that was one of the nuggets that I got from the conference. So that was a screenshot I took when you uh, when you were presenting, because <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't know about that. So I, I, it's great to hear. So, th I mean, this is, this is why I, I love doing this podcast, too, because you think you know enough. You think you know a lot. And then you go out to these conferences and you pick up these little pieces of gold that I've never heard of. So one of the things to my team was find this thing and let's start <laughs> utilizing it. So yeah. just, just to go back. So you were presenting and, and you showed this similar to product. How let's describe it a little bit more for the listeners and just in case they don't know what it is and um, you know, how can they utilize this? Sure. So basically, so I'm, I'm sure you, You've seen it, or if you haven't, you'll see it now. You'll see it now that we're talking about it. But um, on your listing, probably someone else says it says similar items to compare to. That's not what I'm talking about. It says newer model available, and a lot of big brands are using it whenever they have version A and they're launching version B, like a newer 2.0 version. They'll um, have this widget that says newer model available. So people don't know is that you can ask Amazon, hey, add this product as a newer model available. If you get someone who doesn't know what they're doing, they'll just reject you. But I think you could. there's even an option through brand registry that you can just go yourself and do it. And I always tell people, if you're really having a hard time, you can come to me and I'll help you out. But Amazon does it themselves. And just by doing that, you get so much just ranking juice that just, just back and forth. And then the crazier part is, and this is going to really be mind-blowing, is that you can use it to upsell different products. So we have a client who sells supplements. So they have a 30-day count, 60-day count, and a 90-day count. So from the 30-day, we did a newer model available to the 60-day. From the 60-day, we newer model available to the 90-day. So we upsold them from the 30-day to 60-day and 60-day to 90-day. So whether they're in the beginning of the funnel or end of the funnel, they're going to buy one of them. So either you're going to get your 30-day sale, that's fine, or if you have an opportunity to do 60, stay, 60 count or the 90-day, uh, the 90 count, whatever, um, you're going to be able to upsell them to even more. So, and even besides that, you're getting the clicks, which is very powerful. That's awesome. Now, <laughs> all right. So we already got, now we've got nugget. Anything else? <laughs> There's a lot more. <laughs> is that something you didn't share at the conference? <laughs> I'm trying to think if it comes to me, I'll definitely throw it out. I love sharing information for me. This is just fun. Like I've discovered this whole world of app. I mean, just to go quick back of my background was, I've been doing marketing and branding for a very long time. I Amazon didn't even exist in my brain a couple of years ago. So I was working under a very large company and you know they were expanding their Amazon division and they asked me to join. And in the beginning, I rejected them because Amazon wasn't so big back then. So then I actually went through and I started building out their Amazon and now they're in actual like retail stores and everything. But um, whenever I just started, Amazon was nothing. So I just started networking and getting different connections and meeting new people. And I found this whole world of Amazon that just people weren't speaking about and people just, it was just underrated. And that's kind of where I tapped in and kind of, you know, to learn because I always love thinking outside the box. So all these different ideas that um, that I always speak about, people don't hear is because I think outside the box, like this new model available, you know, people don't, <laughs> people don't think about it on a day to day, but it's something that's so powerful. So that's kind of my background on, on how I put things together. But another thing which I, I spoke about there, but it's still very powerful, is that people underestimate the power of their title. And what people do is people kind of fill their title with their brand name as the first keyword um, of the title. And I, I find that to be a very big mistake. 
and I always speak about it and people come, you know, after me and say, no, what are you saying? That's, that's not true. I say, you know, try it with one of your listings that's eh, medium performing and you'll see. They took away their brand name from the title or even put it at the end and they already start their, their, their ranking pickup. And the reason for that is two reasons. One reason is Amazon, the first four, four or five keywords within your title are the most important. And that's what Amazon picks up whenever it, uh, it gets uh, into ranking. That's A, but B is your shoppers. Think about it. Whenever they're on their phone and half your title is cut off or even on the desktop and they're seeing your title, they don't want to see your brand name first. Unless you're a really big brand name, they don't want to see that first. They want to see the keyword of what they're shopping for. And right when it connects to, hey, I'm looking for a sports water bottle and that's the first words I'm going to see, they'll click on your listing as opposed to, you know, A, B, C, D, one, two, three water bottle, you know? So that, that's also a very, very important and underrated thing that people aren't really touching upon. Yeah, that's another great point. We've been playing around with that as well. So some listings have, some listings don't have, and you're not going to get suspended for not doing that. At worst, at very worst, it'll be a suppression. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just put it back in. But I don't know. I've never heard I, I've never heard of anybody being suppressed, even when they remove that the brand name. Is mm -hmm. that what I say? Or, no, I have it. And but I say just put it at the end if you really want to play it. Say put it at the end of your of your title. Right. So just before we get into the next subject, uh, just want to let the listeners know that if you do have any questions, that uh, you know we're talking about trends, we're talking about what's going to be happening in 2023, but also what's coming up in Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Throw your questions in, and we'd love to hear from it. If you have any comments about what we're talking about today, throw your comments in. Love to hear from you. Uh, we do have a great giveaway today. Uh, Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about the giveaway? Yeah, sure thing. So we actually were doing two things because we do marketing and we do SEO. So I was like, you know what? Let's do two giveaways for you know to kind of touch base on both. Um, so the giveaway, one of them is a free product launch where we'll take your item and you'll tell us which keywords you want to go after. We'll put a plan together and we'll run it for absolutely free. Um, okay. And the second one is $200 off of any of our listing optimization packages, which include a full optimization from the title, bullet points, description, all the keywords, and all the graphics, main images, infographics, lifestyle, A+, plus, et cetera. So those are two different giveaways that we're running today. All right. Fantastic. I, you know what? The product launch giveaway sounds to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, yeah. That's perfect for anybody looking for a new product launch. That's that's just an awesome giveaway. So thank you, Mark. All sure. right, before we get into the next topic, let's just hear a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Clear Ads. Looking to maximize your Amazon ads ROI? Well, whether you need full service or just one or two services. Clear Ads Amazon advertising experts drive outstanding results across the Amazon marketplace. With over nine years of experience, their Amazon PPC managers have helped thousands of companies to drive down their cost of sales and scale up their revenue, profits, and orders. And with their unrivaled Amazon DSP expertise, Clear Ads DSP services are tailored to your brand. You really can't go wrong. Get in touch today with Clear Ads' dedicated team by visiting the link in the description or visiting clearads.co.uk. And remember, more sales, better ROI, incredible growth. Check out Clear Ads today. All right. So, you know, I, I saw... You know, just sticking with the theme uh, for trends for Black Friday or what do you do to get some extra sales without just spending all your money? And I don't know about you, Mark, but one of the things that we try to do is provide uh, like a pre-launch. So it's like a pre-launch, but it's for pre-Black Friday. And uh, I, I think during my presentation, I talked, no, I didn't, not, it was on Thursday night. I had a presentation in Toronto. So one of the uh, one of the things I talked about was the pre-launch, and that is just letting people know who you are, what you are, you know, a week or two before you launch. That could be the same thing that you do for a Black Friday, Friday Cyber Monday, is letting people know that you're having a Black Friday sale, and if they act now, 
they can get an additional 5% off. And the reason for this is, especially this week, you're going to go into the sales and your sales are probably going to be down. They'll be in a bit of a valley um, because everybody's waiting to see Black Friday. So this is just uh, one of the things that we do to get people to click and buy your product before Black Friday. Do you have any uh, tips on, or do you use pre-launches at all? Or yes, pre, so sorry, pre-holiday. Pre-holiday, yeah. No, I got you. Yeah, so I always say it's very important to build an email list. Um, that's like the number one most important thing. And people say how, and it, it could get a little bit hard, but that's, that's so important. And it, there's a lot of benefits behind it, and it's very underrated. Reason being is, A, you can run giveaways or the same idea of a promotion, and it won't cost you anything because you already have your email list there. You give them 10% off even before the, the product is like live on Amazon, people purchasing, go right away, you'll get the number one new release, you know, or those kind of ideas. That's A. B, it's showing Amazon that these customers are loyal to you. And that itself will, will help you with the ranking. Um, when Amazon sees you have a lot of return customers, they repeat, they're buying other items from your store as well. They they love that. They they show that your brand is loyal and you have good quality products and they're coming back. So I would say an email list is a very, very important and underrated thing that not people are, you know, tapping into or even if they have an email list, maybe they're not using it properly. But yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's that's true. A lot of people don't really understand the power of that email list. So when you, you talk to um, Sean Hart or Seth Stevens over at Post Purchase Pro, they'll tell you that you get about 40% additional revenue by tapping into your uh, into your email list. So it's sure. not bad, not, not bad. <laughs> All <Not> right. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about, uh, uh, oh, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, what do brands miss? Let me get my thoughts together. I, I, you know, I missed a week of this, so I got to get my my mind back into the podcast thing. But what what do brands miss when uh, when it comes to ranking? When it comes to ranking, so yeah. you mentioned one of them earlier before, and I always I always push this and explain this to people. So whenever people make the A-plus content, people just put the design and just kind of fully look over the actual crawlable text, the description, and they'll just put a nice design in, which is great. But Amazon does take into account. The actual text that you put there. So when many people just skip it and say they don't take it into account, that's wrong. And people want that clean design, which I totally get, but you could still put a text box on the bottom and put all the keywords that you want to go after. And PG menu, no one's reading the description or even the bullet points anymore. You're doing it more for Amazon's sake. But it's so important to input that there because many people are making that big mistake of just putting up a design, but they're missing the whole entire SEO aspect of, of the A plus content. Yeah, and I know that there's a question we'll be answering about that, about the indexing, but let's just get to it right now. Does A plus index? That's what everyone has their, their whole idea about. I We found that it does index. Um, we found that even just putting it in, in the description the right way, <laughs> you see everyone, <laughs> you're right. It's such a controversial thing. And uh, many people have done tests on it. We've seen that it does index uh, based on our experience. Yeah, I know um, when we when we had Steve uh, Stephen Pope on, he showed us uh, a couple of things that we like, he couldn't say. Oh, the A plus um, layout itself indexed, but when he did the back end and playing around with meta descriptions, the meta DI words that he did use Spanish, he did use uh, some other keywords, and it what ranking showed us in a case study that it it ranked and so yeah, yeah my, my my take on it is i have my suspicions that a plus in indexes but i know more i could be more solid around uh that the the meta keywords uh, in the back end you get 100 characters you can play with on each image they index i can say the index i know the index we tried it yeah, exactly. No, I totally agree with that. Yeah. All right. So what about mistakes? What are you seeing uh, with people, new launches, you know, the mistakes that they're making? Another mistake I see is that when people launch a listing, you know, maybe they'll just throw up some pictures and just, hey, well, let's see if the, if the listing picks up. Um, and if it does, we'll invest more. If not, we'll just throw it in the garbage. But people don't understand that the first 30 days of your product going on Amazon is so important. 
Amazon takes that data and does so much with it for how many clicks you get, for how many sessions you get, how long they were on your listing for. And it's very underrated. And I feel like people aren't kind of utilizing that properly. So a big mistake is that people just put up a basic listing and then fix it after. But the, the, the yeah. what you're supposed to do is make the listing the perfect, beautiful way that you want it to be. And whenever people come on the listing, you're going to actually start to get those conversions within those 30 days, which is the most crucial time you want to show Amazon that you're getting those sales. Yeah, uh, and mistakes right now too, is that uh, this is uh, this has been out there since ASM, ASM4, I think. Mike McCleary gets up on stage and he says, right. you want traffic? If you want a list, like a launch, create a blitz. He just called it a traffic blitz. And, you know, make offers from Facebook, drive traffic from all these different areas. And right now, uh, if you're not doing it, you're missing out on uh, the 10% credit from the brand referral program. Exactly. So Amazon's rewarding you. And if you're, if, if you're missing out on that, just take a little bit of time and either work on Google or work on Facebook or work on something you know, you could even work with influencers to drive that traffic, but do something to drive uh, traffic. If you do have a bit of a budget, we'll work with multiple. Now, if you're not familiar with this yourself, hire somebody. Hiring somebody is not a bad thing. If you can get 10% back from uh, Amazon, just think of the travel or the amount of money that you'll be saving on these ads. You know, some of these ads, the, the conversion rate, now, I'm going to say this because I got, I'm going to be talking about recurring. But for me, with soap, I can go and I can sell my three-pack of soap. And I have no problems going out there. And if it's going to cost 27 bucks for a conversion, go ahead. I'm, I'm all for it. Because I know once they buy it once, they're going to come back and buy it again and again and again. And I'm going to have at least one year's worth of customers that are going to be coming back. So yeah. I don't mind spending that. And Amazon's going to give me ten percent back. Oh, hundred percent! I agree with that, and and it's very underrated because even without the ten percent back, it's already worth it. And then just the ten percent is just the cherry on top of the cake. Um, and besides that, Amazon really loves outside traffic for so many different reasons. But one main reason being is that it's free traffic for them, and then they're going to retarget all these people who are coming onto Amazon. So you know, when you go shopping, right, you click on a product, and you don't end up buying it. But when you go on a totally different website when, or in your emails, you're going to keep getting retargeted with that product until you're eventually going to buy it. So they love it. They're going to get the conversion. They're going to push and they're going to be your salesperson, so to speak, until you get that conversion. So it's very powerful. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, what do they say? The two birds with one stone. So it's, uh, yeah, you, you get exposure both ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got a ton of questions. I don't know if we should just go over the questions now. <laughs> uh let's see i think we probably should kels we got yeah we got 10. yeah yeah we are loaded up today so yeah we can jump into them um let's do what yvonne's question first yeah i have some listings that need optimizing if i make a lot of changes all at once within the listing will this be good bad or it doesn't matter interesting question i'm trying to think Okay. It will be good, bad. I mean, well, showing Amazon that you are optimizing your listing is a good thing if you're doing it right. You don't want to just do too much at once because I've seen when people just totally we totally redone it all at once. Like, it, I think it will take a small dip. Um, but I feel like if you're doing it the right way, then you should be fine. That's what I feel. Yeah. The my take on it is, uh, I I don't know if I would. For me, I I don't know if I do that. It's not that there's a right way or a wrong way, but. I like taking bits and pieces. So yeah. if I do see that something's wrong, I can say, oh, it was that specific exactly. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to mention that as well. That, that's true. So you can kind of test, oh, this actually worked and this didn't, and then you can kind of troubleshoot it from there. Right. And one of the things that we'll do is if we're using, let's say, Helium 10, or mm -hmm. you could just use a spreadsheet. No matter what you do or what you change, you should enter it into the spreadsheet or into a note in Helium 10 and, and show the date and then, you know, what you did. And then that way you don't have to second guess yourself on, oh, I did this at this time. I changed an image. I changed my primary out. Uh, 
whatever it is, just make sure, even if it's the smallest change, that you record it somewhere because it's easy enough to forget. But um, yeah, for me, it's just bunts. I don't go for the home run all because you, you don't know what worked or what didn't work. Yeah, I agree with that too. All right. Um, going back to A plus content uh, from Cool Hand ninety nine. Is it just the file name of the photos or the text on the images that is keyword important? I would say both. I mean, the main thing is like the keywords on the bottom. That it's called crawlable text. That's important. And again, even if you're not putting it everywhere in your listing, take one module, make it a text box, put your description there, and just call it a day. If you really are into like not breaking up your A plus content, but it's important in my opinion. Right. Have you ever heard uh, about uh, putting your ASIN in front of your keyword? So if you re rename a file, it would be ASIN uh, handmade soap. And what for ranking? Uh, yeah, for any of the images that you would put on to uh, A plus. So it would be ASIN handmade soap, ASIN natural soap. I haven't heard of that. I mean, I heard that people put the keywords there, but not with the ASIN. Yeah, uh, I've heard some people talk about that. Uh, I don't know how good or bad or ugly that would be. <laughs> okay, I got you. All right, uh, next one is from Yvonne. Is it still okay in terms of service to use capitals at the beginning of the bullet points? Um, I don't remember, I'm trying to think. I don't think we do. Um, no, do you know if it's still if it's against terms of services? Yeah, it's against terms of service. Um, when it when they first came down on it, I think it was last year. I was really surprised because people were actually getting suspended. We had a few people that came back and said they were suspended because wow. they didn't know what, but it was the caps. So now it's not as harsh, and we weren't doing it. We stopped doing any um, emojis or yeah, exactly. I, you know, and, and now I'm going back and I'm seeing caps and emojis and all this stuff <laughs> back well, in play. And we've we've changed it back to we put the first part of the uh, we we only put the first part. Um, the And that is usually the uh, benefit up front in caps. And then. Yeah. You know, yeah, that makes sense. But also everything in caps just it, in your I don't know, the way it is in my mind is like someone's screaming at you. <laughs> and yeah. it just feels it feels like just aggressive. Yeah. I you don't need to take that approach. The first word or uh, first two words you could do capital just to bring out the benefit and then explain it. Yeah. But all caps is just too much, it's too aggressive and it just doesn't it's not visually, you know, appealing. Like you don't want to even look at it. Um, or same thing with emojis. Like I remember when they were cracking down on emojis like two, three years ago, which was funny. Um, and I feel like only in some categories, emojis would work, but using it on, you know, I, we have someone who sells like a wine decanter and he's selling it for even more than competition. Then he puts emojis. I say, if you're trying to go as this luxury, nice brand and you're just throwing out emojis there, it's like, it just clashes. Like it looks like a kid's product because you're using fun and cute emojis, but you want to sell as like a nice, you know, uh, handmade, whatever wine decanter. So it makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I agree with her, but sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, I mean, I would say just to balance it out. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not an emoji guy. So, uh, <laughs> but I do do the all caps now. I, yeah. Like at the beginning, at the very beginning. That makes sense. All right. Next question uh, from Tony. Should you s be spending hard on Amazon PPC this week leading up to Black Friday? I feel like it's going to be competitive, but look at, at the end of the day, Amazon loves PPC because you know they're making money off of it. So I feel like even if you're getting some clicks and and whatnot, it will help you. But there's no way to, to you know to rank for those huge keywords now because I feel people have started doing that a month ago. Yeah, uh, you're 100 percent right. Uh, it's the lead up, not the day of. So, uh, you know, if you, and this is where, this is like money uh, market makers, right? They, they can just snag all their money from all the day traders. Well, this is kind of the same thing is you go into the marketplace and Amazon will definitely send you an email saying this is what you should be doing. But for, for me anyways, I, I know Tim, uh, when we were on Centurion calls, we would say the same thing is that we don't really increase our budget at all. We, we hardly do anything the, the day of or the, the week, you know, the, the week of 
Black Friday. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, a couple of days after. We don't play that game at all. Um, we kind of keep it the same and we do it even a little bit different. We call it a cascade or a waterfall. And that is you lower your bids at the beginning. So you don't even get ranked, you know, or you won't, you'll get, you'll, you'll be shown a couple pages back. Let the other people spend the big bucks because they're going to be crazy over those few days. Let them go out of inventory and that's fine. Let them go out of inventory. And then the mid, we call it the second third, then you bring your bids up. And then the third, the last third uh, of the, uh, the holiday or the Black Friday is where you bring your bids uh, back up and you're the person that people are going to grab uh, the inventory from. So that's typically the way that we do it. And I don't know about you, but I don't typically even give a sale. Like I'll stick with the same price, typically. I mean, because that's how it goes psychologically. People are looking, oh, even if you write sale, or even if you're doing, the, people just think, oh, everything's on sale and they'll buy it. And many times that, that's what people do, even do. Um, but a, a funny thing I've seen with some um, some people do, and I don't know how allowed this is, but in their main image, they'll add a tag or they'll add like a kind of like, I'm like it would make it look like it's part of the product, but it says like Black Friday sale or sale. Yeah, yeah. Um, so officially, Amazon's algorithm won't pick it up. As, it's like a text box because it looks like it's part of the product, but it will catch people's eyes and then they'll say, "Oh, it's a sale," um, and you know they'll kind of get the clicks from there too. So that's an interesting idea. Yeah, that's a that's another way around <laughs> using using your image, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So you don't have to have a great sale you have to have a really good looking product and have high perceived or you know good good perceived value mm -hmm. um but you don't have to throw in a sale to 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 get it now i do know like one of the guys i used to work with there was a, they got a hundred seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of sales over the black friday Cyber wow. monday this goes back 2019 and they lost they lost, they lost money. Wow. Oh, because they made a very big sale? No. Uh, yeah, because they they did the amount of money that they discounted off of their products and the amount of money they used for PPC and driving traffic from Facebook wow. was more than what their $750,000 brought in in profit. Wow. Yeah, that's that's not fun. And I guess many people don't realize that until afterwards. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Like when you're planning out these, you know, going out there and planning a sale, well, where are you getting your sale from? How much you, how much are you, uh, uh, what's like, what are your discounts? What does that, what do you have to do? Like you have to know some numbers here. What's Amazon going to take? What's your PPC? What are your external traffic? What, what's external traffic cost going to be? And you don't want to give away the farm because if you do, you might have some really great sales, but what's it? What's it like? And that's one of the things. That's one of the reasons why, if we do give anything off, it's very little. You know, it's very little, and we'll be driving traffic usually more from our pre Black Friday sales, letting people know, hey, we do have Black Friday, but if you want better sale, five percent off, and that'll get that'll stir some interest. For sure. And what I've seen is that another great way and another idea what to do is to get some people outside to advertise it as a deal on Facebook groups because a lot of people who want those freebies or who want those discounts are actively searching on Facebook, different groups, different ideas. So if you can get in touch with one of those admins just to, and I think maybe they'll charge you $100 to post it and say this product is on sale, even if it's not, or maybe if it's just 10%, 5% discount, and you just get that visibility, you're going to get a lot of organic sales from that too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Next question, Kels. All right. Uh, next question is from Claudia. Uh, I checked the house of it, Amazon website and under launch packages, it looks like you're doing search find buy. Am I misunderstanding uh, the service? Uh, I thought Amazon banned search find buy. <laughs> this is like a direct uh, hit. No, we're not doing, that's not the idea that we're doing. We go with something and it's called surveyed sales. What we're finding is people to go and kind of analyze your listing and in exchange, what we're doing is they're getting a free product. But 
instead of search find by that we're trying to manipulate the rank through different you know um like links and shady links we're not asking for any reviews we're asking them to analyze your listing and which is a whole science and idea which i could talk 30 40 minutes about it alone um that we're asking them to analyze your listing come back with a feedback about your product and in exchange then they'll get their product for free so it's not against terms of services to do that right yeah <clears throat> so uh that was the loophole <laughs> yeah uh, no, but we're not like, you know, anything shady with reviews or with right. links. Like, like, you know that that's the main idea yeah and there's a there's a couple of uh companies that are doing it um we've gone out that route and like we don't provide that service at all but we go and find companies that do provide that service we know it's legit there's not a problem doing it this way um the old way yeah they've come down and they've clamped down and said you can't do that anymore but this way there absolutely is no problem because you're getting a service they're talking to you they're it's a survey that they're actually giving you information yeah. about your product Mm -hmm. And in exchange for the time, they're getting the free product. So it's not like yeah. we're asking them to manipulate. They're the ones who are going to search, and they're the ones who are spending their time. We're not forcing them to do anything. Okay. Next, Gels. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, from Marina, Amazon put my brand name in the title as a first wor word on all my listings. Why did this happen? I, I, I've seen people and I heard this before and some people say they came and change it. So you could make a case to kind of get it fixed, but I've heard this before. And unfortunately, if they're really not going to change it, then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. I mean, you could check with catalog, um, but you might, Marina, I'm wondering if you've even tried to change it with a flat file. Not sure if that would work or not, but um, uh if it if it doesn't, you might want to either check with feed or check with the um, catalog department. All right, so we have a couple more questions left. Uh, cool hand ninety nine. Uh, Norm, can you please give us your Black Friday PPC strategy? I know you told us a little while back. Oh, I just, just did. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, that was that cascade. So I never, I I'll, I'll never just start bidding right off the top high. I just let everybody else lose their money. And then uh, later on, I come in later on into the game and I'll bid what I normally would. I don't go crazy. Um, everybody's looking for sales. And if I can get it, if I can get on the first page, awesome. Uh, I know my chances of getting on the first page is towards the end of the day or towards the end of the uh, event. All right. Um... Next question from Claudia. Do you recommend external traffic advertising and press release for a new product launch? And if so, what external traffic sources do you recommend for the home and kitchen category? Thanks. So any um, external traffic is good and is important. Um, so we use the tool called Amped, which is um, driving Google ads to Amazon. And we've been using this for a long time and seen great success with it because Amazon, again, loves the outside traffic, but Google's traffic compared to any other, like Facebook traffic, it has high priority. Facebook is on the bottom of the list. Google is on the top of the list because it's clean traffic. Um, so we've seen great success with that. I just uh, noticed that Nir said to Marina that uh, he believes that Marina has an hour uh, of free time with him. So Marina, contact Nir. And he says he thinks he can solve your problem. So <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> All right. Let me see. Um, I got to finish that one. OK, just uh, two more questions uh, from Yvonne. When naming the images, do we need to make a sentence that makes sense? Or can we just uh, cram them with unused keywords? No, I, I say just use keywords. Uh, you don't have to make a whole sentence. They just name. Name of the main keywords that you want to go after. That's that's the idea. Okay. And our last question is the new model widget available in the UK? Yeah, I think so. I don't think there should be any reason why not. Yeah. Okay. So I think we got all the questions answered. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're all set, Norm. All right. So before we get uh, to the Wheel of Kelsey, just to let everybody know, we've got an incredible, and I've been seeing all the wheels of Kelsey's coming in. So we have a, a great giveaway today. 
where Mark and his company are going to give you a free product launch. So pretty cool. I think it's relevant. Anyway, <laughs> Mark, again, thank you for the for the great giveaway today. But here's sure. your last chance. Wheel of Kelsey, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, and uh, tag two people. You get a second entry. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. And while we're doing, while you're doing that, we're going to go over to our last spot for our sponsor. I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors who help keep our podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast wouldn't be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Goldstein Patent Law, Honu Worldwide, Netfluence.co, Video Telepathy, Startup Club, and Dragonfish Brand Management. I just want to let our sponsors know, you're awesome. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, so Mark, you've never seen the Wheel of Kelsey, huh? I think I've seen it once, but uh, no. All right, so turn your volume down. <laughs> it's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, so we have a bunch of entries today. Thank you everyone who entered. Um, as Mark said, we have uh, two giveaways that we're doing. Norm, how do you think we should do this? Should we batch them together or maybe do one here and then do the $200 off yeah. the listing package? Yeah, let's do that. In let's the do one in the group. group, one in the Facebook group, and then one here. Give me a little bit okay. of stuff. What do you guys do? Okay, just to make sure that the person um, can spend the money on the package. It's, yeah, um, so the launch, the the launch is uh, the product launch is the one that we'll give away in the uh, it right here. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're gonna shuffle this up and it'll be a tough win today. There's a lot of entries. Yeah, a lot of competition <laughs> today. And let's see. The winner is All right. No, no, Dick. All right. All right. Congratulations, Dick. Make sure you email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And like we said, we're, we'll uh, do a little competition uh, contest in the Facebook group uh, for the $200 off the listing package. So uh, check that out. And uh, Mark, how do people contact you? Um, um, so our, our website is very easy to remember, amazonseo.com. <laughs> Um, and then also, yeah, we're on LinkedIn and, you know, we're available house of amz.com as well. And he's at every event. Yeah, <laughs> that's true too. All right. Uh, so Mark, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, it's, it's been awesome. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm glad we had a chance to really sit down and talk for an hour. Yeah. I don't think sure. we've ever been able to do that. So uh, true. It's, it's we're, all, great. we're both so busy by all these <laughs> events. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm, I'm so happy. We had a great time today. Yeah, and love to have you back at some point. Always. All right. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Thanks again, Mark, for being on the podcast. And thank everybody. Thanks, everybody, for listening today. Hopefully, you picked up a couple of tips from Mark. And if you do want to get a hold of him, it's uh, just go to Amazon SEO and um, just, just uh, you know, I wouldn't say pick his brain, but, you know, his services are awesome. I know... People rant and rave when they talk about Mark and the quality of work he does. So uh, that's it for the pitch for Mark anyways. I don't get anything from this. I'm just telling you he's a good guy. All right. So, Kels, anything else? All right. So as I was saying at the beginning of the intro, uh, we are moving uh, a new – way of streaming here on the lunch with norm podcast so we're going to start streaming only on the facebook page um it's one single location so it just makes it easier for everyone um where we go live um so we're going to try it out for a couple of weeks see what the results are like we're if, up in youtube yeah we're still uploading the episodes afterwards to youtube right. But um, there's one single location on Facebook uh, for the lives. Um, so you can still check out all the episodes on YouTube. They'll just be a day uh, behind when we do that. But um, other than that, it's all the same. So that's the Lunch with Norm Facebook page. And then, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you smash those like buttons, give us a thumbs up, and um, 
yeah, join our Facebook group. That's the Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. And uh, I think that's about it. So anything else, Norm, before we Yeah, the up? only thing I like to know is if anybody that is watching on YouTube, if there's a reason why they wouldn't go over to the group and check it out. I know that there's a page. reason for a us. Page. Yeah, yeah, Paige. Uh, I know there's a reason for us. Uh, we want to get some for you and uh, just be very specific on what you're seeing, give you some nuggets up front. Uh, so we've got a couple of ideas there that I think will really enhance the podcast when we do publish it on, on uh, YouTube. But not to stop anybody from watching it. We just hope that it's not going to inconvenience anybody to come over to the page and watch it, which is, hopefully it doesn't. Yeah, so we'll see. I know um, we're not going to get everyone who watches uh, this message. So, um, yeah, if you do know anyone who watches uh, live on YouTube, uh, make sure to let them know that it's still happening, but just on the Facebook page. And uh, I think that's it. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. It's nice to be back today. I've uh, been doing a little bit of traveling, but I don't think I'll be doing anything up until December the 10th. So I'm in the seat for a while. Uh, all right. Please join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for being part of the community. Thank you for, I mean, we just couldn't do this without you. And we will see you on Wednesday. Kels, anything? Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.